Hello everyone, today I want to go over what the key is to William Skinner's gravity power machine. Now many people have tried building this, but been met ultimately with failure. So what is the key? The key is variable speed input which must not be coupled rotationally to the shaft with the weight on it. So let's show you what I mean. A vigorous thrust. So here's David Query. Very simple. And In actual fact. He has it moving back and forth and there's no ellipse mechanism, which I'll show you. But uh, his works so you could go a little bit more complicated. So that top weight could go in a ellipse. Okay, so here's some drawings, lots of great drawings, just uh, nobody's showing it working. So see how that little ellipse is on the top there at the top left corner? So that's correct. So David's just goes back and forth, which I think works too. So, when it's running, this weight is traveling in a shallow he, over an inch in height. So if he turns it The on. device okay. quickly times itself and will then run. So he says it quickly As times believe, itself, Mr. but I'm going to show you why it does that. Now this is an older video of his, which is in bad quality, but look at this big black pulley. You see how it's changing speed? That's the key. Excuse me, that's the key. So, um, the motor has a lot of load on it most of the time, so it's bogged down. But when the load comes off the motor, it speeds up and moves that real quick. Watch it again. So that is the key because if that motor was too powerful or too fast, then it would lose its timing and it would not work. Skinner's machine. Uh. There's a green blanket in the background. <laughs> Looks like a blur. Okay, so Skinner's machine. Now, I'm sure you've all seen it. Gravity is no reason for levity. And even if it is, William Skinner of Miami still believes in his invention, which he calls a gravity power machine. So this video, I have it playing at 0.75, which is more realistic. Uh, the original video, I think, is a bit fast. Some engineers say that William's claims are fantastic, but that doesn't stop William from demonstrating on a model what he says should be as clear as mud. He takes a thin cotton thread and drives the machine from a 1 8 horsepower motor. Shafts fitted with weights turn on an off-center axis and the weights go round and around. So let's go back to the first and look at these rods, top right corner. Gravity is yeah, no reason back for and forth. And even so people try timing mechanisms. Timing mechanisms. And they don't work. So here's a photo. I tried to get the watermark off of it. But you still can't really tell what's going on there. It actually looks like old ball joints. Tie rod ends from a car. So it could be. We don't know exactly how he had it uh, geared up on the top, but we really shouldn't have to because we can see how it works. So this mechanism here may actually work, which is an ellipse. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay, so he has a motor, calls it an engine. 
and then he has a car clutch so that's really important and you might need a one-way bearing or a sprag too but you see how that this shaft this top shaft isn't connected rotationally to our ellipse mechanism here so let's just cut to the chase here so you see how the weight is moving freely everything has to move freely so okay he even shows this video the thin motor shaft contributes to the slippage okay so this guy's both had it pretty much right but they never showed a working model so maybe they never built one okay so this top weight does something like this it drives me crazy I don't like having the top weight I don't think you need it So this might work, but it's a little bit complicated, and all it is, is pantograph for drawing ellipses. Let's do that again. So, there's more than one way to skin a cat, but the most important thing is to get your input right and have everything moving freely. It did. You can everything see this is moving single freely. stage machine runs. So, when you put a load on this, it's going to slow down. So, your input needs to be correct or else it'll lose its timing and it'll stop working. It does run very smoothly and if I apply a little braking effort to the sideput shaft I can feel the torque increasing as the top weight starts to overtake the lower weight. If I give it too much this is what um, it does. Obviously I can put it out of time because it's only a small machine but nevertheless, if you build a big one, that becomes a bigger issue, of course. So that's it. You want the input to be variable speed. Sensitive. 